let's break down three of the best clan capital attacks so you can two-shot any district and earn more capital gold. We'll give you tips on how to use each and mistakes to be aware of. Let's begin with the third best, the Mountain Golem. This troop has been quite dominant ever since the Endless Haste was released. A troop like this is going to need plenty of support. So Hog Raiders are used to control pathing a little bit while also stunning and distracting defenses. This really does help for the Mountain Golem as you want to preserve as much HP as possible while using these Super Barbarians to control control regular and defensive buildings since you want to make sure that the mountain golem is going in the direction that you want. So within your first attack, this is the army composition that I would recommend. Of course, you are taking one frost, one haste, and one zap for the first half. The frost is really good for key defenses or any sustained fire areas while also having the haste to give your golem that nice speed buff he desperately needs. And then of course, the zap can be really flexible against burst or ramp up defenses like an inferno or a multi-camp. Of course, just be sure to notice if the district has lots of sustained fire that the golem is going to be forced to take. These type of bases can spell trouble for your mountain golem big time. So, to start your first attack, you're going to use a Super Barbarian to control the pathing of the Mountain Golem that it will initially take. Of course, this will then allow you to drop in the haste in a given area to where you're going to place your Mountain Golem, using a Frost Spell over as many key defenses and other sustained fire DPS, while then allowing you to place in your Mountain Golem and let him go to work. But that's not, oh, that's not all. You've got to preserve his HP. So Hog Raiders or the Super Barbarians can be used to really control the pathing where you want the Mountain Golem to go, but also using things like the Hog Raiders to distract and stun defenses. This can be things like Rocket Artillery, Blast Bow, or even stuff like the multi cannon or Inferno Towers, which are definitely quite annoying. This is also why you have the Lightning Spell that you can use to reset these defenses and make it a little bit easier on yourself with the Mountain Golem moving through. As, as you start to run out of troops, you will be able to let the Mountain Golem do his own thing and clear a large area. As long as you're able to get around 40 to 50% of the base, this will then allow your first attack to set you up nicely for your second one if you support your Mountain Golem well. Now, this second attack gives you a little bit more freedom. I would recommend running a composition like this to finish off the rest of the base since you really don't need any more Endless Haste. So I would automatically recommend placing in your Mountain Golem in the existing Haste or else you're not gonna have a fun time with a non-hasted Golem. Other than this, you're just going to use your Hogs to help control the pathing the Golem will take, especially since there's should still be some defenses left so you should try to take advantage of that and try to control where that golem is going to go to just be sure not to spam in all of your hogs or else you just won't have enough support for your golem towards the end outside of this the frost in this case can be used to clear out any sustained fire dps and make it much more difficult for them to burst down the golem well you can also have a rage spell to basically power through a certain area doing a ton of damage, pretty much almost one-shotting most defenses and allowing you to easily work yourself through, and it also allows you to avoid that time fail. And this pairing of Golem and Haste, it just gives you a ton of flexibility to take out most designs. I would just recommend trying to avoid super compact designs with a ton of sustained DPS or Dragon's Cliff since the Golem can't fight back. Next up, the second best is Sparky. With its devastating splash and long attack range, this troop is quite formidable and has the power to two-shot any base regardless if it's compact or spread out or even if it's maxed or not. The Sparky though will always need support, so typically things like the Super Giant, Battle Ram, Super Barbarians, or even the Hog Raiders are all great options for the Sparky and can help her get the value needed. So your first attack should always have a setup kind of like this, with the Super Giants, Battle Rams, and Hog Raiders which will allow your Sparky to stay up for longer periods of time and keep her moving around the district, while having frost and graveyard spells in order to 
slow down key defenses at that or any other defenses around it, while also giving you distraction via the graveyard for any support troops that die or any post troops that die out. So to start your first attack, you're going to use Super Barbarians to kind of expand the placement map, especially if you're able to do that. But I would then also start running in some Battle Rams to start opening the walls of the base and be able to start getting your troops in. So this means that I would recommend dropping in a Frost Spell at the beginning while then allowing yourself to use a Giant then the Sparky. You want to make sure that you are being patient with your Giants and your Hog Raiders. You want to be sure to keep refreshing the Giants to keep the Sparky tanked while also having the Hogs to stun and control the pathing of the Sparky since the Sparky targets defenses. Of course, the graveyard spells are used in order to distract the key defenses and other defenses from targeting onto your Sparky as she moves in. You want to preserve as much HP as possible. Even if you do get a time fail, you should try to make sure that you are keeping her healthy. As long as you keep the Sparky moving and healthy, this will perfectly set up your second attack as long as you get around 40%. Now, for your second attack, this is the army I would typically run. This composition is great for finishing off the base with haste giving all the tanks and the Sparky the speed they need to smash the rest of the base. So I'd recommend dropping in one haste, followed by a giant to start tanking while you send your Sparky in that same haste. You wanna make sure that you're using any of the giants within the haste so they can keep up with the Sparky and also help tank for longer. Of course, you wanna make sure that the Sparky is working herself around, so using the hogs to control what she targets, like I said in the first attack, as you wanna make sure that you are stunning defenses. Thus, this pairing is a very good setup with the Sparky, Frost, Haste, and Graveyard throughout two attacks. This allows you to have a lot of flexibility to take out most designs. Of course, just avoid Dragon's Cliff. You cannot hit air with the Sparky and thus the dragons will melt it down. So just don't hit that district. Of course, the best army is going to be Super Miners. Despite their nerf during Hammer Jam last year, the Super Miners remain a top contender when it comes to clan capital attacks and easy capital gold. So unlike other attacks, Super Miners really don't need support. So an army comp is rather simple. 10 Super Miners with two Frost Spells. Since it's really important that you have those two frost spells. I'd recommend avoiding running double heal or triple graveyard as basically you're taking the full force of damage at the very start, which could lead to less percentage for your super miners. So when you're attacking, make sure that you look for an area to where you can spam in your super miners. I'd recommend dropping in your frost spells first though, by using them on key defenses or even dragons if you're hitting dragon's cliff. Other than this, you can basically spam in your miners and let them do it their own thing. And if done correctly, you should be able to keep them together as a group. And it will really make your second attack much easier. You just want to be very aware of bait, let alone groups of traps that can basically do a lot of damage to the super miners. So you need to be very aware of this because this could be a good option to use a heal over that given area. But for the most part, you want to make sure that you are just avoiding those or tripping them up super quickly by just using one super miner. Other than this, you just want to make sure that they're staying together because a split will cause them to do less damage and could result in less percentage. Now, the second attack of super miners is roughly going to be the same, except you are going to be running Frost and Heal. This is what I personally would recommend because it really does help keep a lot of the Super Miners alive. So you're just going to find a place to spam in the Super Miners again, using a Frost over any Dragons if there are any, or an area of defenses that you want to slow down. And otherwise, you can just let your Super Miners get to work. As they move through the rest of the base, though, you've got a heal spell. And you're going to use this in an area where you can basically top them back off or keep them moving through without taking too much damage. Of course, this is a very flexible attack that can basically three-star most designs. But of course, it is going to be a nightmare against max compact bases as compact designs are definitely very good against super miners and maxed ones are definitely very difficult. So try avoiding hitting max bases that are super compact, but otherwise this army is not too difficult to, to learn or use. It's just worth knowing 
knowing that you might three shot sometimes, but it is still wor a worthy attack to use on any district for those big capital gold numbers. Just try to avoid capital peak. 